Welcome to Market Week in Review for the week ending December 13th, 2019. I'm Puneet Tiara, and I'm joined by quantitative investment strategist, Dr. Kara Ng. Kara, good morning. Good morning. So there are three things I wanted to get your thoughts on. First and foremost, any updates on the trade deal? Secondly, if you could please share the recent findings from our global market outlook and how those might be impacted by central bank decisions. And thirdly, the outcome of the UK general elections. So starting off, last week, senior portfolio manager Megan Roach shared how the US and China were particularly motivated to come to some sort of tentative trade agreement prior to the December 15th deadline, given that the US was going to apply a 15% tariff on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods, specifically consumer goods. Have we made any progress? Yes, so on Friday, US signed a phase one deal with China, which uh, canceled the US tariffs originally scheduled for December 15th, and also cut the existing US tariff rate by half. And in exchange, um, China will also remove some tariffs, buy some agricultural goods, and uh, have some reforms on some issues like intellectual property. So this easing in trade tensions is great for markets and the economy. As we've said before, trade wrecks havoc on confidence, investments, uh, global supply chains, and just general business activity globally. And this phase one deal is a material de-escalation, which may unlock a global growth rebound. Generally, uh, mini cycle upswings benefit globally exposed assets like emerging market or European equities. Okay, that's really interesting because earlier this morning I was reading Russell Investments Global Market Outlook distribution and I saw that, ironically, you would have viewed continued trade uncertainty as a positive for economic expansion because that would have prevented central banks from performing any more further monetary tightening while they waited for some resolution. Can you just describe how that reconciles now with the recent developments on the trade deal with that view? Yeah, sure. Um, So great question. Um, In 2019, the largest number of central banks eased since uh, the global financial crisis. And in the outlook, we said that the number one risk or outlook was uh, trade. If that was the number one risk, the number two risk would be central banks hiking once they believe that global uncertainty has eased and inflation pressures are building. So that risk hasn't materialized and probably won't be for a while. As widely expected, the Fed left interest rates unchanged. And in the Fed's statement, dot plot, and press conference, it all reinforced our baseline view of a prolonged pause. In the statement, the Fed removed language about uncertainties in the outlook and uh, called the current stance of monetary policy appropriate. In the dot plots, 13 of 17 members saw interest rates unchanged through 2020. And then in the press conference, Powell said many members thought uh, inflation overshoot was an appropriate policy. This basically means the hurdle for hiking rates is very, very high. Okay, so it sounds like inflation is a watch point. Can you talk about the consumer price index and producer price index data that came out earlier this week? Yeah, sure. So the Fed's preferred inflation measure is core PCE, um, which will be released next week. But we can definitely take this week's um, CPI and PPI report and back at what November core PCE will be. It, so it looks like um, 12-month core PC is going to fall from 1.6% to 1.5%, which is even further away from the Fed's 2% inflation target. Basically, inflation pressures are muted, which gives central banks breathing room for further accommodation. And the last thing I wanted to get your thoughts on is very timely politically, uh, the UK general elections. Can mm-hmm. you just talk about what the outcome was and the impact they may, that may have on Brexit? Yeah, sure. Um, so the. UK general election on December 12th was to choose the members of parliament. And then the outcome is that UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson's Conservative Party won uh, the majority of seats by a huge margin. Now, because of this huge margin, um, Johnson is now less dependent on the far right year skeptics in his party to pass deals, which reduces the risk of a no deal Brexit. Reduced Brexit uncertainty is beneficial for the pound, UK economy, and UK exposed assets. So for example, FTSE 250 reached record highs after the election. Going forward, there are still watch points. Johnson now has the power to pass policies fairly quickly, but it also means he might be more aggressive with EU negotiations. And that'll be the main source of uncertainty going forward. Great, well, we appreciate your insights. That's all we have time for today. Thank you for joining us. And thank you. We look forward to seeing you next week. Hi, I'm Eric Ristovan, Chief Investment Strategist for Russell Investments. If you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.